Hi, it's Lily. Today I'm going to share with you some behind the scenes of my latest stop motion animation called Happy Year Alone. If you haven't seen this animation yet, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. I've really enjoyed working with this miniature cottage because it's so cute and cozy, but at the same time, having to deal with low ceiling and tight space, I've encountered many, many challenges. And very soon I start to wonder, where am I gonna put my lighting? So I was very lucky because I have the brilliant and super talented Frank Hammond who was kind enough to come over and help me out before I start to shoot to figure out what's gonna be the right lighting and the right setup for it. At the end of the day, I was able to make it look as good as it did because of his advice. So I'm really grateful for this. So now let me give you a tour of my studio. So this is what my studio looked like on day one when I just set up the equipment and everything is still very organized. I obviously have my main set in place. I've attached the backdrop on the C-stand and the side of the backdrop are taped against the main background. Then I've got my desktop. I usually set it up on a chair that is on top of a table to reach eye level. I've got Dragon Frame installed on it and a USB extension so I can connect it to the camera. So when it comes to lighting, I use an Aperture 60X for strong lights and I also have a set of three LED panel GVM 800D to work for the rest of the lighting. In terms of lighting equipment, I also had those small Aperture MC and I had two of them for this shoot and they were really precious for almost every single scene indoor. I had those little tripod to connect to the Aperture MC. I always try to keep my little props in one container because otherwise they're so small, they're easy to lose. I have my lovely bear with the badger. They're covered with cling film to make sure that they're not gathering any dust before I'm ready to uh, film them. Same for my two puppets and the multiple heads. I always keep the leftover clay so I can touch up the puppets during the scene. They are wrapped up in aluminum foil. I have my little eyelids. More screws and L-hook bolt to be able to screw the puppet from underneath. I have the dragon frame remote so I can take my picture remotely. Lots of sculpting tools, more screws and little tools, some wet wipes to always have some clean hands to touch clay, black tack, white tack and gaffer tape. The way I usually set up a scene, first I place my little puppet in position. I make sure it's well screwed from underneath. I install all the little props. Then I install the lighting. In that case, for the outdoor scenery, I have one light on each side and then the stronger aperture on the back from above. Then I move around my little desktop station and try to bring it as close as I can to the set in between the tripod of the light. I try to reduce the risk of me knocking any tripod in my way when I'm about to animate the puppet. Now always make sure I have the best angle. I take my time with the camera, make sure the focus is right. And then the little dance begin between the computer where I have the Dragon Frame software and the little puppets moving it tightly, very slowly and gently one little bit at a time to make sure the movement is smooth in between frames. Once I've shot all the outdoor scene, I dismantle my set. So I had my backdrop that I can separate into three parts, the main one attached by a C-stand, and then I can just remove every bit until I access my cottage. When it comes to the seam that we're indoor, I place the cottage on top of the little platform, just so it raised it slightly, it's less work on my back. And then I just open up the wall so I can access whatever space I want. Sometimes it's just removing the whole roof, for example, to be able to place my puppets. The most complicated part on this shoot was the lighting, to try to get some light in there. So what I did is attach the Aperture MC on the pole of the C stand and then be able to bring it all the way through and inside of the cottage, as you can see here. I end up with a very limited area to animate my puppets because it's already a tight space and then I have a small amount of space to get in there without knocking the camera or the pole that hold the lighting. So it wasn't the easiest thing to animate. Once I was finished with one scene, I can just screw the wall back in, turn it around, open up the front for example, place my puppet in position, add the little props and get cracking with the next scene. 
Sometimes I had to remove the wall just to get access underneath for the screws. So if this scene, for example, is walking away and I was only able to create this movement by accessing the screws and I couldn't have the wall blocking the access. So I had to remove the wall, but I still wanted to create the windows and filter the amount of light coming into the room. So I took this big piece of blackboard, cut a little opening, so I placed the lighting behind and it was still filtering, just so the right amount get into the room. And every time I was moving to the next scene, it was the same kind of game of figuring out how I'm gonna put my lighting there, finding just the right amount of lighting. And I was so glad I had this app when I can remotely decide how much lighting I need. I need to have some lighting from above, but also some lighting from the window. So it's all about controlling the amount of light that get into that space. One of the hardest one I think was probably when he's cutting some carrot in the kitchen because it's just so small to get in there with the lighting. I had one aperture MC from above and one from underneath. Even though I put them at 1%, they were still strong. I placed some paper to filter it even more. Adjust the top one as well. And then try to get in there without knocking anything in the way and access my little puppets. And something as simple as cutting a carrot. Oh my God, I spent two hours cutting three slices of carrots. This bloody carrot drove me nuts. I mean, try to keep it there stable, but at the same time getting some action with a knife to cut it without having the whole thing moving around. It was, it was a long scene. I think it's probably the last time I'm gonna cut a carrot on camera. Anyway, I was moving to some next scene and then I had other challenge to figure out how I can still filter the amount of light I want to get into the room, but I still need to access it. So as you see, it's a bit of a jigsaw to get the light from above, to get the light from the side, not get too much light into it, and still try to get some space to get in and out. And sometimes I didn't have enough space to get both of my hands, so I'm still learning and try to understand what is the best setting for each of my shots. Now there's a scene at night where it's at the table, at the window, and for that I was really thankful to Frank Hammond who explained to me that if you put the aperture at the back, barely at 1%, it will bounce onto the mirror. So he taped the mirror with duct tape just to leave this one little rectangle of space and that was plenty enough to bounce just enough light on the face. I also had to get the aperture MC from above, so I get the lighting all around it and the silhouette without just getting too much of it. It was more about creating this effect on the face that is just so cute. And then once everything was in place, patiently move the puppet around and sometimes do something that seems simple, like a blink. Oh boy, playing with those little tiny eyelids which always seems to escape. And when I shot this scene, but from the side, I had to put back the main wall in position and then place the lighting from the other side. I was trying to achieve the same angle and amount of light that end up on the puppet's face. One scene that was really physical to animate was the night scene, when you can see the puppet from outside the cottage. For this scene, I set up my lighting equipment. I had one aim at the window, the other one bouncing on the ceiling. And then I turned my little desktop area around, went behind the set, get on my knees when I was still able to see the little screen and then go underneath the backdrop and into the cottage. So I removed the back of the cottage so I was able to access it. That was the most uncomfortable scene I've ever animated. There is lots of bending, twisting around. That was just not great. And I ended up picking up the knee pads very quickly just to be able to manage the whole scene. As you can see here, I've placed both of my Aperture and C to burst some light into the room so they can be visible from outside. Another scene that was fun to animate is the bear, because it's, it's a big beast of clay. So I end up playing around my little tool, moving one tiny bit at a time for each feet, for example, or try to move the arms and because they are really fully clay they were hard to move but if you press too much you remove the fur so it's always a bit of a, a balance in between those two but at least I always have one firm hold of the feet from underneath with the screws that's something I didn't have for the bed scene because I couldn't screw the feet of the puppets so I end up tucking the puppet into the bed by using some duct tape and attach firmly the duvet all around then I can place it back into his bed 
and try to get in there honestly it's just so small i wanted to end up the scene with him closing his eyes so having different eyelids for slowly uh, just just getting in there was was enough i thought you know what I'm, I'm gonna keep it very simple for that scene another one tricky to animate was the bathtub it was a very small bathroom with a very small bathtub and as you can see i had to use an old skeleton place the head into it i had to make it as tight as possible just to fit it in there and I even use some duct tape so I have some hold and I can control the body better so it stay there. And then place the roof back in, switch on my lights, try to get the camera and, and try to move the heads one tiny movement at a time. From now on I start to get a better rhythm when I shoot my animation. It's not my first one so I get more comfortable, I take my time, I've learned to be patient because that is very important otherwise it's very tempting to rush things and then when you're the one doing the post you end up regretting it a few days later and think oh I, I wish I spent a bit more time on the lighting to get it right so you don't have to fix it later on. One thing that really helped on this shoot that I usually never do is a storyboard. Usually it's in my head but I don't do a physical storyboard. This time I took a, a whole day to play around with the set, use an old puppet, take some pictures from all different angles, print the pictures place them around, move them until I have a storyboard that makes visual sense. And that was really useful to get back to every time I was setting up my camera for the next scene. So I had a better flow, I was more organized and overall I probably saved some time on the shoot because I knew exactly how I'm going to shoot the next scene and I was more prepared. I usually never use rigs because I don't like them but I was kind of obliged for the little badger to get some rig in so I was able to move it around without touching the fur too much. I mean I'm always glad to try new things. At the end of the day stop motion is about problem solving so whatever challenge comes ahead take your time try to figure out what's going to be the right solution for your project and I think it's worth putting all the energy because when you see the puppets start to move on screen is always magical and despite the endless hours and days and weeks and months that you spend on it by the end of it when you press that button and you see the whole sequence going really smoothly and the whole image start to appear it's just the whole frankenstein fantasy basically it's alive it's alive so i spent the last eight days living in my little dark room like a vampire try to not go completely nuts and I think that's a wrap and then the magical world of post-production begin I probably spend roughly a week doing it the main software I use to edit my video is Lightworks to fix things I use a mix of Photoshop and After Effects now when it comes to music and sound I buy all of them on Audio Jungle for the voice actor, I found him on Fiverr. And then it's just about being patient enough and go over the footage again and again and again and again until you drive yourself absolutely nuts, but it starts to come together. I'm lucky to have a wonderful assistant when I do the post-production who always check up on me, so that helps. Thanks for watching this behind the scene. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're working on your own stop motion animation, I really sincerely wish you all the best because I always said stop motion animation is more of a journey than a hobby. It takes so much time, so much energy. It's all about problem solving. So whatever challenges you're gonna have to tackle, be patient, be kind with yourself. You will get there eventually. Now, as you know, all my projects take lots of time. So I'm not going to be able to upload another video for at least a few months until I'm having the next one ready. And I've already started working on the next one. So I'm going to not tell you anything about it. Keep an eye on my channel. And when it's ready, I'm going to be really happy to be able to share it with you. Until then, I hope to create some amazing things that they bring you joy and that you take good care of yourself because it really matters at the end of the day. Bye-bye.